Chris Duffin here Sorry. with what? Fucked it up. <laughs> I was like doing this as you were like. <laughs> Chris Duffin here. Today I've got Brad Cox from AccuMobility, and uh, with us we've got uh, Jared, who is training for the next Olympics in Tokyo uh, to uh, throw the discus a long ways, right? Correct. So, um, what are some of the issues that uh, that you've got going on, or opportunities, however we want to discuss it? So mostly today I'm feeling like irritation in my calves, particularly in my right one. Um, which is leading to irritation in my squat, um, even some of my Olympic lifting, um, and then in my shoulder. Uh, traditionally, I'm bench pressing and throwing. Okay. And uh, which, which uh, arm do you throw with? My right arm. Okay. And so we've got actually the opposite irritation chain the all, running all the way down to the, uh, the opposite foot, which is kind of interesting. Right. Yeah. It's so one, one of our favorite patterns. Yeah. You know. uh, what is happening in the, in the squat itself? So the biggest thing that I'm noticing in squatting and, and even in my Olympic lifting, like cleaning, heavy cleans, um, is when I'm actually on the descent, I'm starting to notice that I'm internally rotating. My uh, uh, pinky toe and the outside of my foot's actually, in some cases, starting to elevate. And then I'm having a lot of inflammation and irritation on the top of my foot and the outside of my ankle. Okay. So this is not an uncommon problem that we see. But we're talking about caving on the inside. He's obviously got some pain sensations uh, coming into it. Um, one of the things that we would want to look at right there is assessing basically the rotation of the lower half of the leg, tibial rotation, to make sure that we can actually get in those positions and be looking at the foot. Brad, do you want to lead them through yeah. the tibial rotation so we can just see, let's, let's a starting point, where, where, where are we at? So this is one of our favorite assessments because we can learn a lot of information uh, that is going to apply all the way up the chain and we can literally gather all that in one assessment. So what we're going to look at here is I'm going to have him square his hips off, okay? And I'm going to have him bring his heel back just slightly, just so that we have a little bit of a bend here. Now, I want him to actively rotate this foot in 45 degrees. You can let your knee go with it. So rotate your whole foot in, okay? Now, push that big toe into the ground. Push that into the ground, okay? You can see he's actually already doing something interesting here. Right? We're already getting some of these toes coming off the ground as he tries to drive that in, right? I wanna see if that continues. I'm just gonna hold a little pressure here. I wanna see, is he gonna lose contact here? The goal here is we're gonna maintain and the arch firing contact with this as he rotates this knee back out, okay? So let's actually rotate just a hair further, okay? Crush my finger here, and then let's rotate this back out, back out, back out, and we're looking for where is that force going? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, okay? So we've, we've lost this entirely. Okay, which means uh, this, is, this is internal rotation, essentially. As he's going through that rotation, he's having a harder and harder time keeping that big toe glued down to the ground, and you're watching him roll this here, okay? Which is literally where he was complaining exactly. about the, the pain, you know? Now, uh, oftentimes, on video, you might see this as like a knee dip, and so people would mm -hmm. traditionally think, oh, this is some sort of knee problem, we start in the hip. But what we found, and why we emphasize all the time, foot mechanics is if you don't look at this first, you're literally missing the beginning of the whole sequence, yep. okay? And so that's something that we want to really identify. For fun, let's also look at the left side, okay? So let's rotate that foot in 45 degrees, because I think that this might be yeah, we're actually worse or just as bad. Well, we'll find out, all right? All right, so actually come up a little bit. You can rotate in 45 degrees, rotate. Rotate. All right, you can't even get this onto the ground yet, okay? So rotate this out, out, out. Let's see what happens. Okay, so pretty similar. Do you feel like you're having a really hard time yeah. maintaining that? Especially the irritation in my, kind of like in my arch. Especially the irritation in his arch, right? And the reason that we look at this is because clearly we're doing, you know, <laughs> you're, you're loaded on both feet as you're going into a squat. If we just assume because you're complaining about pressure on this side, that it's his fault entirely, we might be missing the fact that actually this guy's worse and you're shifting into that, okay? So both sides need a little bit of work here. Right? This will also help wind up and release as you try to spin that torque, okay? Because literally, I mean, discus throwing is a buildup of one big rotational force and then you're launching that. If you have a gap somewhere in that sequence, well, you're gonna do two things. One, you're gonna lose a little bit of that transference of power from the ground, and two, you're gonna start jumping joints in which you're gonna try to gain that, okay? So you either try to gain that rotation through the hips or you try to gain that rotation like from somewhere else. And then we start seeing opposite side shoulder problems. Yeah, like we, we don't know. 
But the point is, the base has to be fixed first, okay? And in his case, without looking at anything else, we don't know if there's also hip stuff, but we do know that this is <clears throat> step one, okay? So Chris is gonna look at a few other things here. It's related to feet. But right now, we've got tibial rotation issues both sides. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have you uh, stand up. And can you raise uh, each uh, big toe independently of the other toes? And, okay. This one's worse, can you hold that up? Well, that's still pretty strong though. A lot stronger on the right side actually. Yes, yeah, so we okay. might be having some hidden left side stuff being the real root yeah. for some of your rotation issues. So we're just gonna go through some really simple uh, foot mechanics prep stuff. Uh, wanted to do, I'm gonna do this second, that's why I had Brad check the, uh, the, the tibial rotation uh, first because we may see some improvement by improving the base that we're working off of. Uh, let's go ahead and have a seat and we're gonna just start with a real simple prep drill to just mobilize the foot. Are you familiar with our foot love drill? Yes. So let's, uh, let's, start with, uh, let's start with that. So we're gonna take his foot up. Um, if you've got a lot of restrictions in the hip, you could do it on a bench that you could kind of reach down a little bit lower, but shove your hands in there in between each of the toes. Uh, pull that back out so you can get in between all those toes. And you're missing this, this one right here. Oh, whoops. Oh, I'll oh, go on the outside. I see what you're talking about. There you go. You still yeah. keep... I keep missing the outside here? Right here. <laughs> these, these, these two. These two. Five, toes. <laughs> five toes, five fingers. I know you can figure this out. Okay. Uh, this is a test. Yeah. No, no, like a, one finger here, start there. Next thing, next thing. This, there is, we this go. is gripping footage. Okay, so this we're learning a little bit about Jared in this process. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> five fingers, five, five toes. toes. Okay, so yeah. it should be a little bit painful, and now we're just going to rotate the foot each direction. So we're actually going to grab it and then go boom here and here. Okay. And his foot's uh, almost in full extension right now. And we're gonna have him now pull it into flexion as much as he can and do the same thing. Okay. Heard a little pop in there. Yeah, a little That's adjustment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go back to the where it's most comfortable and drive the hands in a little bit further. Okay. Oh, you could even throw in some ankle rotations there. Mm -hmm. you know. Working it circular. Give it a little, yeah. Just think about you don't need to know. Yeah, you're extension, just working it through. Yeah. Just move the foot through its entire range of motion while we're doing this. Okay. And let's do the uh, the other foot real quick. Ooh, this hip's a little tight today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I heard some noise from that one actually. <laughs> so just go ahead and repeat the process. Another little adjustment mm -hmm. there. Okay, and give us some whole ankle. Press some momentum. Yeah. All right. Okay. So all we're doing is just moving all these metatarsal lines and getting them broke up and moving, moving well. Uh, let's grab that acumobility ball right there. We're gonna start uh, kind of training the foot a little bit. Uh, Mention some, uh, some pain issues a little bit or sensation uh, in there when he was trying to get into those rotational piece. So we're gonna stand up and you're gonna just put your foot right in the plantar area. So just step up, set and uh, go right in the midfoot here. Let it spread right the tears, yeah. Okay, and now put your pressure down on it. Kind of stand on it a little bit and now I want you to raise your toes while you're on it. Can I move more into a little bit? Yes. You can find a whole bunch of space. There we go, good. And lower, and then move out through the foot. You can do a few reps in each spot. And this is my favorite right here. Yeah. So we've got, now we're really opening that up. Grab the ball, open as high as you can. Grab the ball again, open. But we're starting to use this muscle, muscles, there's many of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never, learn the anatomy of the foot because I'm just like there's so many little little tiny muscles tons of bones tons of muscles. Uh, and that's the that's that's the beauty of it that's why it's so important is it's such a dense area for bones muscles tendons ligaments all this stuff and we don't use them very and often neurologically very well. your brain yep. lights up the palms yep. and the feet 
uh, disproportionately. Okay. And we're going to do the other foot a little bit as well. There we go. And then get that, yep, the money spot right there. And you can actually move it around a little bit between those areas to finding kind of where it's uh, essentially most painful at. And grab and open. And as you're open, you're trying to splay as wide as you, as you can on there. Good. And that should be good. Okay, and let's stay in the standing position. Get towards a, like a squat position. Okay. All right, good. So <clears throat> what I want you to think about, you can go ahead and go all the way up back to the standing position if you want, but is think about taking this area of the foot and shortening it. So there you're you going to go. draw that in. Good. And we want to get this large toe like spread and planted outward as much as possible. Okay, and then and shorten that. this, shorten that up, and we're cueing this muscle in here to come in and start working. We're actively cueing arch support is what we're doing here. So we're just teaching them uh, how, to, how to do that and engage. Okay, and good. We want to be pushing through this point, this point, this point and then through the heel, and we're gonna test that really fast. So cueing strategy, if you got a band, you could do it on itself. But uh, I'm gonna go on the foot without issues to start with, okay. I can hold one if you wanna do them both at once. We'll do right here and right here. Oh, okay. okay. So we're gonna capture both those spots, so I'm right below here, right below here, okay. And you wanna pull that bench away a little bit from them. And let's go ahead and have you squat. Good, okay. We picked up here, so I want you to do it again. And try to really capture that. Good. Uh, now, Brad, I don't know if you saw it, but oh, yeah. the first time on the squat, he picked really heavy on this right side, yeah, uh, which was biasing here. These would have slipped even sooner. Once you focused here, that foot visually, I saw the positive change as well. Oh, cool. So um, we don't necessarily, we could manually test that again, but that's what I want to have you think about is pushing these into the ground and get that little bit of narrowing of that big toe. So focus on, there it is. So you can almost like plant it first and then almost spread your toe. So spread your foot so you could go right here and then spread off of it. There it is. There you go. There and it is. Then short foot. Good. Short foot. Good. And let's squat. Good. So, <clears throat> so that's piece one. That's right. piece one, that's foot. We're now we're starting to work the bottom, starting to clean some of that up. Yep. Let's go up the chain a yep. little bit. Now, so. an exercise I would recommend would be for you to do uh, barefoot calf raises. So not like training, training your calf like type load, but barefoot really engaging and starting to work this area of the foot and you're gonna be able to, to, to pivot off of this ball really well without the support of the shoe. So getting down there and really getting up into extension that's going to allow you to train that and uh, it'll allow a better spread of the foot while you're doing it as well. So it'd be a really good way to ingrain these patterns. Um, so let's go ahead and have you do that body weight first. Sure. So let's, uh, right here. Yep. Brad, jump on his back. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm clubbing. Just put my palms up. Yep, just like that. Yep. Good. Perfect. Good. We're getting the added benefit of a little stretch here. If you, know, if you don't yep. have an elevated surface, you can clearly do this on the floor for the activation part, yep. but this is really nice. So this could be a good prep work for your squatting, Jared, uh, day or throwing day. Just doesn't take much, um, but really open that foot up, cue all the muscles in it to come on, cue the splay, put your shoes on, get ready uh, to go do your work. That's but now let's, let's move back to the tibial rotation uh, piece of that. So we've got kind of the base cued, a little bit of mobilization done, so, now we're going to find some fun stuff a little higher up the chain. 
Okay, so specifically, we're going to focus on tip anterior, which is going to run down the front here. At the same time, we're going to do modified vice technique, where we're going to hit the back of gastroc, okay, and we're going to hunt around through here. Because as, literally, as you're loading that knee forward, we're getting this rotational force, and you're, there's multiple things at play here, okay? And so we want to try to identify anterior and posterior lines, and really find out where those restrictions are. So, what I want you to do is come over here, you're going to put an acumability ball right on that, Okay, and actually let's change angle. I'll show it for you, all right? You're gonna come right where I am, all right? You're gonna put a ball like this. You're gonna put a second ball right behind, driving directly into the first ball, and then you're gonna put the foot through active range of motion. Okay, so think about what Chris was telling you in terms of even though my foot's in a shoe, mm -hmm. as I'm bringing it up, I'm bringing those toes up. As I'm coming back, I'm pointing and I'm firing that arch, okay? You're gonna work the top, and then we're gonna find three spots. You wanna go right or left? Let's, uh, let's do the left side, because that's when we've been doing a little more work to. Yeah. You need to do both, right? So, you're right off the bone, right? In the tip anterior here. And now, on the back side, we're gonna line that up, and then bring your hamstring down, okay? Such that you're compressing that at the exact same time. That feels okay? horrible. It should, yeah. okay? So this, now, is, this is really good for you, Jared. Like, <laughs> especially being like a rotational throwing athlete. There's so much. Like, we don't want to be losing these gaps. And we're showing, even when you're working in just a sagittal plane of the squat, you are seeing some of these issues prevalent. So exactly. I think we'll have a bigger payoff, actually, when you get to your, your training. Which clearly is the end goal. <laughs> exactly. Go ahead, really force those toes, OK? Drop that hamstring into that ball. Sink, make sure you're on the muscle, not on the bone there. You find that spot? Yep. Feel good? Okay. Now we're gonna move down a little bit further. So you're only gonna do that three to five reps, okay? Definitely. We want maximal input, very low volume. Okay, we're trying to signal this and then move on, okay? Okay. How much fun is that? Horrible. Fantastic. <laughs> Much worse than it looks. People are generally shocked by what they find in here. And, oh, yeah. Uh, because they, they, I mean, he's getting on the right side. This isn't even his symptomatic side, okay, which is kind of our point here, where you got to check both sides. Because, yes, he, for symptomatic relief level stuff, needs to be doing this on the right side as well, because that's where a lot of this pull is going. But if we don't address this left side issue, he's going to keep loading that right side like that, and it's not going to get better. So you do about three to five reps, roughly three spots. You're going to hunt around and work through that range. And that's one technique. Our next technique is going to use either the baby boomstick or two of these. I prefer the baby boomstick for this. For that, I want you to come down, and we're going to put you into a position where you can put that leg wherever you want. You're going to put one ball down. You're going to take the baby boomstick directly on top of it. You're going to lift, and then you're going to go through yet again, active range of motion, okay? So now we're working soleus, tib posterior region, and those outer calf muscles. These are the guys who affect the arch firing a lot. Perfect. In, yeah, so literally aim right behind this bone, okay? And aim right down on top of it, okay? Now point those toes, good. And normally we could start another spot down. So you can find that next. So this shouldn't take long, okay? Uh, you know, it's taking longer because Chris and I are explaining stuff, but really, get the ball under the foot, do a couple of these, you know, grab your fingers there, move around. You're mm -hmm. talking a couple minutes. You know, we're not talking about 20 minutes of work here. You know, three to five reps, move your way up, and then get into some calf raises. Do some activation drills. And that should do a good job of both improving that rotational force, but also improving your access to it. Mm -hmm. You know, your connection to the foot, your connection to that arch, and your connection to being able to drive up through there. Okay? So that's where we're going to hunt. So let's go one bit further up. This will be the last spot. And you can take any angle you want, okay? Looking around there. You'll know when you're on it. You guys don't need to wait. Awesome, okay. 
Now let's go back and let's do the drill that Chris was doing where he had those under your feet, okay? Let's go and really try to concentrate on, Chris, you want to set him up for that again? Where we put those under there and yep. have him try to squat. Um, and let's really try to concentrate on that arch and then driving that knee out and let's oh, try to maintain rotation. Looking way better. Yeah, same, it was on that left side. And move the toe out right away. Yeah, no. You know, that. this first time you were lifting those toes off, you're having a harder time. You can get access to this pretty quick a lot of times. It doesn't have to be okay. some overwhelming amount of work. Yeah, that looks so much better. Okay. Dude. Wow, okay. I, I, yeah, you yeah, I ripped it. that yeah. one out so, to make it go. The, um, your arch mechanics there yeah. like, looked great. How did that feel? Uh, much more stable. Ease. I noticed it was really easy to plant my outside four toes and then actually kind of widen that big toe, but I honestly didn't even have to think about actually hardly even shortening. It was just kind of locked in. Awesome, because that's that tripod base. Mm -hmm. you know? And if you're missing one of those pieces of the tripod, you're losing your, your ability to drive force through them. And so that's, that's awesome, dude. Um, Let's check real quick, just for fun. Let's check some tibial rotation on that left side. All right, so we did very minimal work here. I just want to see how far along you got. All right, so let's take it. All right, let's rotate you in. Okay, let the knee come. Okay, crush my fingers. All right, do your splay that Chris was working on. Good, crush, crush my fingers. All right, rotate could... that knee out. Rotate, 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 rotate. Good, still on the ground. Still on the ground. Awesome, is he squared? Because that's yeah. still there. Yeah. He's 90, right? No. Good. He lost it way before this last Dr time. Oh, yeah. Now drive the knee forward a little bit, too. Good. And rotate. Yes, even with flexion. All right, do you feel that difference? Yeah. Okay. I noticed the first like, time I just even had like, cramps in my like, You couldn't have even, you, right we didn't even get you to set up before it like came off the ground. Okay, so that's just an expression. This is very minimal level work. Okay, this is one shot at it. You do that a couple times, you know, over yeah. one week of training before squatting, yep. you know, and building those calf raises and everything. Your access to that gets so much better. And then you don't have to keep doing it. You know, yeah. because essentially you now make that the pattern yeah. where every time that's what's happening and it reinforces itself. And that's our message, which yep. is that like, well, let's go ahead and load this pattern a little bit. So uh, yeah. step up and do a, a rear leg elevated with that foot forward, left leg. Uh, left leg out. Yep. So this is a great, a rear leg elevated or lunge, uh, particularly the rear leg elevated play. is gonna, amazing. You're gonna really see the output of lack of foot control and you'll feel it really fast. So this is actually a lot harder, more challenging. So this would, we definitely would wanna do this shoeless so you can actually really be working. You could have your socks on. Wow, that foot looks so much better. But Dude, go ahead and load looks this. Awesome. Good. And if we lack that control, we didn't do a prior test on this one, but we're really looking at what the output's gonna be here, but really seeing what's driving it through the foot. I mean, that looks like fantastic. Yep. So this is a great way to kind of ingrain it. You can do this on your off days, whatever you want to do. Um, if it's holding pretty well, you may not need to. Like I said, the, the calf raise drill is a, I think would be a really good one for you. Yeah. Any questions? No, that was awesome. All right. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Cool. Um, you don't want to work your other foot really? Uh, yeah, we might as really well fix quick. it yeah. while we're at it. Yeah, yeah so let's, let's do the whole run, thing, run the, you know. <laughs> we at next let's do the Stop ball one first. Oh, you already did the ball one, right? Yep, I already yeah, did the ball one. Yeah, let's do the, um, the just the vice. Yeah. yeah, just the vice that we need to do. Because symptomatically, this is the side. And then we should also look at your squat on this side. Yeah. Because that looks like oh, great. freaking perfect. Like, that was yeah, literally. Like, interesting that this actually less irritated than yeah. That's what we find That's what all the time. Yeah. We, have, we talked about this in the podcast yesterday. You know, wherever you're noticing it is rarely the cause of the problem. It's often the end of the line. And so you notice on the right side, you've got stuff there. It's just not his fault. And for discus throwing in specific, the amount of rotational force that's being driven up through there as you're spinning around uh, is tremendous. And so you, almost just as a maintenance routine, you need to be doing this to mitigate some of that volume. That's a really easy one to do. You can do anywhere. Anywhere. And then uh, vice, yep. Yeah. 
I actually prefer just being a bigger guy. I prefer the boomstick because I can't get my oh sure into position. This is what I did. So to try this to see how you like the difference, where you feel you can get some more pressure in there with this one. But I like it because usually I can't get my body to get over the top of that as much. And so how is this comparatively? This looks less bad. The, the, it looks <laughs> like, dramatically easier. Actually. Yeah, like. I was actually surprised. Like, I was noticing, especially when I was doing the initial vice drill, um, I was noticing a lot more irritation um, and tightness in the left one than I was in the right. Exactly. In the stuff, in terms of like the rehab and um, preventive stuff I've been doing, it's mostly been focused on the right side. So it's kind of a, a learning experience to learn that I've been kind of going about the whole wrong way. Well, you're, you're cleaning they, up. They both need work. They both need so, work, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, not that it's just that the hidden guy, and that's what we emphasize a lot is, how do you find those one to two hidden ones? Mm -hmm. Not the not the ones that you that are obvious where you're like oh my quad's tight or you know what I mean it's like who's the culprit that you don't know mm -hmm. because he's the one who's actually pulling the levers there in terms of making you do compensatory things. Yeah, and I do actually I like doing it with the boomstick more because the extra weight I can just kind of grab on mm -hmm. versus the baby boomer I've actually kind of got to apply some pressure and you know, this makes it easier to relax and kind of work into it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that weight takes care of it yeah. like for you. Get up there and just do uh, do some. Bodyweight squats, see how you're feeling. Spread those toes. Crush that big toe. Breathe and brace. Good. Awesome, drive those knees out just yeah. a little bit. I just want to see that rotation. How's that feel? How's that ankle feel? Feels strong. I'm not having the same irritation in either one, really, especially I'm noticing the more stability in the left leg. That's the key. Much more than I was before. Yeah. This is my fat. <laughs> that left side looks pretty awesome It looks awesome a right big, yeah. visible difference there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm noticing I'm having a lot, a lot better control of like actually my foot placement and being able to spread them and like kind of control each toe individually as well. Yeah. That, I, that's your key, man. Like, go spend some time on that left side. <laughs> and, it's and it's that right five side. Five minutes will, max to hit max, both legs. You know? So, yeah. Like, just move up and down. Move on with your day. So. All right. Okay. Good job, Appreciate man. You. Yeah.